Hello, new life. How are you doing today? Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Joel Pesmino. I'm the lead pastor of Encounter Church in Washington, D.C. Uh, and a point in the past, I was a church planting resident at New Life. And, you know, uh, it's always a joy for me to be able to, you know, connect with you guys and, and, and do stuff uh, with, with, with the church. So uh, I'm glad to be able to bring today's uh, daily devotional. If you have a Bible, uh, I want to read you a short passage in the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 9. I'm going to read on verse 15. This is what it says. It says, uh, On the day that the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law, was set up, the cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night, it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at His command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, but then at His command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped. And at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with His command through Moses. Uh what does this passage have to say to us today? Um, we're entering into a new year. And if you're anything like me, like the beginning of the year is when we set goals and we have objectives of things we want to reach in this new year. We make resolutions. We have plans. Like it's, it's a time of excitement and preparation. Maybe 2020, like the beginning of 2020 was like, like that for you. You had like these plans, things that you wanted to do. And then 2020 happened, right? And, and for so many of us, so many of those plans that we had, we had goals, we had dreams, we had things we were really excited about seeing. Like last year, I graduated from seminary, and you know, my, my uh, commencement ceremony was going to was going to be in Los Angeles. I had never been there. We had bought tickets. We were so excited about taking that trip, and it never happened. And there's things that happen like that in your life you, that you were looking forward that just didn't come to pass. And, you know, one of the things that happened in, in the year is that we, we were made aware of how very little control we have about our external circumstances. That there's, you know, for, for as much as we want to plan and set goals and things, there are things that are outside of our control that we can't change. And 2020 exposed that. And... If we're honest, just however long has been of this year has continued to expose that. And that can be paralyzing. Uh, if you're a planner, if you're a person that has goals, you're like, well, how can I know what to plan? What, how, is it even worth trying to do something if this year is just going to continue taking and taking and taking and you never know what to do? Some of you might be like, hey, like I'm, I'm going to double down and I might not be able to control what's outside of me, but I'm going to control myself and I'm going to set more goals and I'm going to just, you know, be more disciplined and try to do the like, white knuckle it and try to make my success happen this year. And, and I'll be honest, I, I, I admire the, that spirit. But the reality is that even last year, so many businesses closed. So many churches closed. So, so, so many people like try with all their might and did everything in their power. And at the end of the day, it still wasn't enough. So, so as we begin this new year, how should we look at this new year when we're aware of how little control we have of things? And, and this passage that we just read, I think, gives us a window into how, as a people of God, we can approach situations where we don't have control. Because that what hap- that's what happened to the people of Israel. They're in the desert. And if you read the story, they're in the desert for 40 years. And I always wonder how they planned out those 40 years. How did they know when they would stay in one place and move to other place? And what you learn in the story is that they didn't. That 
it was the presence of God represented by this cloud. If you read uh, the whole story, when the people of Israel leave Egypt, the presence of God uh, goes in front of them as, as a pillar of cloud during the day and then as a pillar of fire at night that kind of like guided their journey. And it's that same pillar of cloud that now when they set out the tabernacle, the tabernacle is basically like a portable temple. It was this tent that was to be kind of like the temple of God, the place where God would meet with the people of Israel. And the presence of God hovers above the tabernacle in the form of this cloud. And what we learn in this passage is that the people of Israel had very little control about their movements. They didn't know if they were going to camp for a few hours, if they were going to camp for a day, if they were going to camp for a month, if they were going to camp for a year. Can you imagine for somebody who's type A that wants to have everything scheduled, that wants to know, you know, by this time of day we're going to do this, that people that, you know, have goals and make projections and and charts, how unnerving and frustrating has to be to not even know for how long you're going to be camping out. And yet I would argue that perhaps this year more than any other time has shown us that. But we don't know for how long the shutdowns are going to last. We don't know when there is going to be a vaccine. We go out and some of us might have the anxiety of like, what if I caught COVID? Uh, when we see unrest on the news and that also causes anxiety. There's all these things that are happening. We don't know how long they're going to last. And our natural reaction is to give in to anxiety and to fear or to give in to anger and frustration. And in this passage, neither of those things happen. What happens is that the people of Israel surrender that need for control over their external circumstances, but they just don't surrender them to nothingness. They just don't give up. They trust in God. They surrender control of their lives to God. And they say, we are going to live according to the guidance of God. And right now the guidance of God is in this cloud over the tabernacle. And for however long it's there, that's where we're going to stay. And we like to say that, don't we? We like to say that we want to give God control of our lives. And we're happy to do that when we think that that means that God is going to lead us to a more successful situation, to a better position, to protect us from harm. And and, and I believe God wants to protect us from harm. I believe that God has good plans for us. But at the same time, it's much more difficult to surrender control of our lives to God when we don't know what's going to happen next. But that's what it means to surrender control, to trust. And the people of Israel for 40 years live around the tabernacle, following this cloud, letting letting God guide their movements. And in a way, I wonder if that's an invitation for us on how we can live this year. You see, uh, the tabernacle, if, if, if you kind of like read a little bit how the camp of Israel was organized, the tabernacle sat at the center of the camp. And then all of the different tribes of Israel would camp to like the different sides of the tabernacle we set up then. So like whenever they would like look towards the tabernacle, everybody would be able to see the presence of God that was hovering over the tabernacle. The, the people of Israel organized their lives physically around the presence of God. You know what their effort in their life was? What the thing that they dedicated their time, the thing that they had control, what they were looking at. They could be looking towards the outside of the desert of their camp where there were enemies and there was, you know, sometimes adverse weather, sometimes beasts and animals that attacked them, all those things. Or they could look to the tabernacle, to the presence of God. And as a matter of fact, the thing that would determine their steps, the thing that they needed to do for guidance was to keep looking at God. And friends, this year that's still so full of unknowns, that, that maybe you are experiencing anxiety or fear, you don't know what's going to come, and, 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 and that sometimes maybe keeps you up at night and you can see the stress seeping in your relationships and you're in a bad mood all the time, or you're worried all the time. Because you know that you can't control your external circumstances. But this is the thing. You never could control them. We, 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 we sometimes delude ourselves into thinking that 
that we had control over things we had never controlled. You didn't have any more control over global pandemics before COVID hit than after. You had any more control about the global economy before COVID hit than after. It's just that now those things are changing under our feet and it's scary. But what would happen if we decided to live not according to that, but according to the presence of God. If, if we center our lives, not around external circumstances, but around the presence of God. If the thing that determined our movements, if the thing that guided us wasn't whatever projections we want to make and whatever goals we want to say that a lot of times we cannot control, right? The proverb says, you know, that the man, uh, you know, in his heart plans his future, but it's God the one who determines his steps. That it's God the one that guides us. What I take from this passage is that the, the best thing I can do this year, and, and this doesn't mean that planning is bad or setting goals is bad, but the best thing I can do this year with my time is to do what the people of Israel do. To organize my life around the presence of God. To, to, to put God, not even first, but put God at the center of my life. That out of everything that I do, like it, it's flowing out of my relationship with God. And I may still not have control over the global economy. I still may not have control about, you know, social unrest. I still may not have control about, uh, you know, global pandemics. But my life is in the hands of God. And whenever he says stay, we stay. And whenever he says move, we move. And following that is what's going to take us to the end. It's what's going to take us to the finish line. The people of Israel make it to the promised land, guided by God. But it only happens because they keep following the cloud. They keep following the presence of God. So this, this new year, may you learn to follow the cloud. May you learn to follow the presence of God. May you learn to follow the guidance of God. May you surrender your plans and your goals and your objectives and your resolutions to the will of God. And may God take us all into the future that he has set for us. Grace and peace.